My name is Lauren Berlin. I live in Lake County, California. I work for the Lake County Sheriff's Office. My name is Joseph Holdner. I'm an electrician. i um, been doing that since high school, pretty much. Lauren means the world to me. We met at a party. Instead of partying, we decided just to play cards by ourselves. No one else mattered. It was just me and her playing cards. We knew we were supposed to be together. It's kind of soulmate kind of thing, you know. I try to be for her is just her support, her rock, her, you know, what she, something she knows that she can just fall back on, you know, no matter what she's doing. I'm marrying her. <laughs> I'm gonna have kids with her, like, she is everything. So I sit down at the restaurant bar before I got on my flight. I was like, I'll take a double glass of red wine, took some cold meds, got on my red eye in the middle seat and just put my head back like, I'll make it through this. I always do. Got home, woke up the next day and I'm like, all right, I'm starting to feel better. Life is fine. But then I started coughing and I was like, ugh, lingering head cold turns into a cough. Amazing. Um, and then I started coughing up blood. I was 27. I worked professionally as a dancer for the Sacramento Kings. I was currently teaching Pure Bar, which is a fitness class, and flying to New York for gigs. So I was like, I'm fine. I'm a healthy 27-year-old. It's just a weird lingering cold. And in 2019, I was diagnosed with lung neuroendocrine tumors. Yeah, I mean, the moment I found out was it was, like I said, my stomach just turned upside down and my, my mind was just racing a million miles an hour, like what our next steps are and just kind of everything all at once. Lake County's great, it's rural, it's Northern wine country, so we're surrounded by great vineyards and we have a ton of wineries. As a kid, there's not much to do. You have the lake during the summer, and then once it gets into the colder winter seasons, there's really not a lot to do. When I was little, we weren't, we don't have a lot of money. We still don't have a lot of money, and we struggled. I mean, I can remember being in the back of my mom's hoopty trying to find change for gas, but we made it through. We have to, you have to keep moving forward. My name is Sean Berlin, and I am Lauren Dorsey Berlin's mom. My mom was a single mom for most of my life. My mom would work multiple jobs and never made me feel like I couldn't have anything or do anything because of our circumstances. Pageantry started in 2008. I won the title of Miss Lake County's Outstanding Teen. It was the first year that they held the pageant and that started my career of pageantry. Everybody loaded in whichever vehicle we were taking you couldn't ask for better bonding on a Friday, Saturday, and win, lose, or draw. You, we all came home together dragging on Sunday. Eight year run, I held four titles, Miss Lake County's Outstanding Teen. I then was able to secure my name in the history book as Miss Lake County 2011, so the first person to win the teen and the Miss title. And then in 2015, I was Miss Tri-Valley, and then in 2016, I was Miss Sacramento County. At Miss California, I got to place top 15. In 2015, I made the Sacramento Kings dance team. So while I was competing in the Miss America organization, I was also dancing professionally for the Sacramento Kings, and I was also going to school full-time, and I was also working as a server part-time. So I had a bunch of things going on all the time. My life is constantly moving. I've always been either doing pageantry or dancing, and then that led into promotional modeling. So as a promotional model, the leaders of the marketing pop-up had said, hey, we have our final show, it's in New York, it's huge, we need you to come and lead the rest of the team. And I was like, cool, <laughs> this is amazing. So I was outside on the phone with my agent and she was like, okay, we gotta book you a flight. So I'm on my laptop and I had coughed 
and this burgundy, like tacky loogie spit. I actually still have the picture on my phone. It spit out onto my laptop and I was like, ew. I took a picture of it and had to send it to my best friend because that's what girls do. We send the grossest things to our friends. And I grabbed it and threw it away. I didn't think about it again. I received a text with a photo that said, I think I'm coughing up blood. And it's clearly what it is. It was blood. And of course, my first reaction is, let's get a doctor's appointment. So they convinced me to go to the doctor, got an x-ray. The doctor said, OK, we'll call you and let you know what the x-ray says. Didn't hear from them. So I told my mom, I was like, well, no news is good news. And she said, that's not how this works. So I called. The nurse picked up the phone. I was like, hi, my name's Lauren Berlin. I had an x-ray. Can you let me know what it said? And she was like, yeah, sure, hang on. So she pulls up my chart. She's like, tick, tick, tick. She stops. She goes, can you hold, actually? I need to transfer you to the doctor. So from the end of November 2019 to December 12th were all of my tests. So I had my x-ray that they said, let's do something else. I had the CT and they were like, yeah, sorry about that. CTs kind of suck. They do the bronchoscopy. He sees what he thinks is a blood clot. It was not fun. My phone rings and it's the doctor. So I answer it and it's on ambient car speaker. And the doctor says, hey, you have a second? And I said, yeah. We're just driving to Costco. And he goes, okay, great. And then he lines out my diagnosis. He starts from that it was, it's a tumor, it's coming back as malignant, it's like all, all of the words that, you know, these are the next steps we need to do, more testing, et cetera. And I go, okay, great, thank you so much. Like, I'll call you back on Monday or whenever and we'll get things started. And he's like, okay, great. And he hangs up the phone and Joseph's still at the stop sign, 10 and two, looking dead ahead. And I look over at him and I'm like, take a left, I'm going to Costco. He slowly just turned his head and looked at me like, you just got told you have cancer. And my stomach just turned upside down and my, my mind was just racing a million miles an hour. It was kind of the scariest moment. It was like, okay, this is real. And in hindsight, I definitely was in shock. At the moment, I was just like, I'm cool. Like, life throws me curveballs, I'm fine. Like, I have nothing else to do but take the next step forward, which is like going to my favorite place on the planet, Costco. I just kind of figured, okay, she's just, she's dealing with it the way she's dealing with it. I just kept telling my husband, I, I don't think, I don't think I could survive. It was an atypical neuroendocrine carcinoma. He said that uh, likely it would be a surgery to get it out. And wherever it was, he was like, we're going to have to go in in a more invasive way. And I was like, OK, great. February 6, 2020, I got my major surgery. They did an open thoracotomy. So they pinned my arm back, and they split from right about here, which is all still numb, to right underneath my left breast. I had a, I have a big suture, a big scar. They removed about half of the left lower lobe of my lung. Um, during surgery, they identified that it was not a atypical neuroendocrine carcinoma, it was two. So they said, now, congratulations, you're stage two. When you see a child in that much pain, writhing, agony pain, you would do anything on God's green earth to trade. Just give it to me. The two main people were my mom and Joseph that helped me through not only pre-diagnosis of just being sick and being frustrated that I was sick, to getting the diagnosis and being scared, but acting like I wasn't scared. And that's where my role kicked in as mom, pain reliever, caregiver, doctor director, nurse, anything and everything. And I could think of, I was any role that I needed to be. Just her pain was extraordinary, horrible. No matter what life throws at our family, my mom's like, okay, but we have to keep moving forward. 
she would push me to like, I'd have to get up and walk. And I would walk to the slider from the couch to the slider and be so just exhausted and sick. And then she'd be like, okay, next day, tomorrow, we're, you're doing it again. And then I got from the slider to the outside railing and puked over the outside railing because that's like how much effort it took me to get there. She's like, okay, then tomorrow you're going around the corner. And then the next, you know, next week we're walking to the mailbox. And she was the one that was like, you can't, life doesn't stop moving. So you have to keep going too. My mom was one of the strongest women, like the best example any of us could ever ask for. And one of her favorite sayings to us always as we grew up was, we'll get through this, we always do. You look at something and it's crappy and we will get through this, we always do. So my mom was day shift to take care of me post-surgery and he was night shift. So he would work all day, he's an electrician. He would come home, my mom and him would do a shift change. My mom would show what I ate, which was generally nothing, and then what medication I've had. And he would go, great. He would do whatever needs to be done in the house, give me my medication, and then we'd go to bed and he woke up like every hour, every two hours as it spaced out to give me medication. Woke up in the morning, did shift change with my mom, and went to work every single day. It was incredible. One of my main recovery items was walking. So I have five dogs now. When I was post-recovery, I had three. I would suit them up when I was able to, and we would walk around the loop. Getting moving and just ma making it up a slight hill and getting to the top, it was like, yep, I did that. And then I'd do it more, and I'd do three loops, and I'd do four loops, and like setting these little mile markers was my main like non-treatment recovery. This is my skeleton, and it has one and a half lungs. So he's got a full right lung and half of a left lung because I like to have my story on my arm. I get to tell people that I'm a cancer survivor, and they go, what? And I go, yeah, see, I have one and a half lungs. From surgery to recovery, from recovery to just now living my life again, I always like to remind myself that like, I have half of a lung and I still like, kick butt on the peloton every day because of where my scar is i see it so i get to kind of look at it and go oh yeah like i i did that and it's kind of like a motivation my life is simultaneously never the same as it was before cancer and it's almost just the same as it was like at those two things exist every day where i go this is normal, life is fine. And I go camping and I play with my dogs and I hang out with my friends. And then I go, oh yeah, I had cancer. Like, that's pretty wild. I worry about Lauren getting sick again, always. Anytime I cough, my brain goes, well, you felt fine for those years while it was growing, we know that. And then all of a sudden something happened. So fill in the blanks. And that's where I constantly live is what was I missing? So then if I have a twinge or if I feel like I'm particularly short of breath, is it because there's another tumor in my lung? Or if I cough and I cough anything, even if it's just a little bit of saliva that feels like it has a texture to it, I immediately have to take it out of my mouth and look at it. And if I didn't see red, I was solid. And then I would just like move on. The fear doesn't do enough, quite honestly, for any of us because we all have the same outlook after we've survived something or lost somebody. We really need to love our people. I was 17. My best friend, she had said, hey, I need to go talk to my ex-boyfriend. I have to. And I was like, Ugh, I'm going with you. I'm not sending you off to the wild unknowns of Lake County high school backroads party. Like, I'm coming with you. We go to this high school house party and she goes and is talking to her ex-boyfriend and I sit down at this like banquet breakfast table and there's this boy sitting there. And instead of partying, we sat down and played cards for hours. And then the next subsequent weeks into March, we kept going back to this house party. So we always play like gin rummy, war, speed, 
we just play cards. So then we would end up, while well, the house party is going on, it's like two in the morning, and we're sitting at the coffee table, just like connecting. Into April, April 1st, 2010, uh, he took me up to Vista Point in Lake County, which is in Lakeport, and he said, will you be my girlfriend? And I was like, of course I will. And then we've been together ever since. We knew we were supposed to be together. It was kind of a soulmate kind of thing, you know? And there was just something about her. I felt like comfortable with her. I felt like I almost already knew her. And as we have grown up, it has been the absolute bedrock of my life. I try to be for her is just her support, her rock, something she knows that she can just fall back on. I always say that he's a rock and I'm a balloon that's tied to him. So I blow around in the air and I'm crazy and I move around and I do a bunch of stuff and I'm always trying to find something new and fun and crazy and like adventurous and he's my solid rock. She's got a huge heart. She cares about people and um, she's very loving, very strong. So not only physically, but very mentally strong. I love Joseph Holdner. Well, because he loves Lauren so very much. Oh my God, that boy loves that girl. Lauren means the world to me. I mean, obviously, like, I'm marrying her. <laughs> I'm gonna have kids with her. I am so excited about this wedding. To watch the two of them say their vows and to solidify what they've done for 14 years. Post-cancer and into getting engaged, it shifted into like, I want to build more. Like make a tiny me and Joseph. I'm so excited to see what we look like as husband and wife and what we look like as mom and dad. They have been through sickness and health and money and no money and buying houses and watch people that they love dearly die. And they have been the coolest team throughout all of it. I think we're ready to start that journey. This is gonna be huge, you know, but it's the next thing that we're gonna do together. It's like starting a whole new page. Like I get to say that getting married is a new like old life, new life. And it's like a whole transition into like being, I mean, even changing my last name. Like I'm becoming a new person and like leaving the cancer like craziness behind and just moving forward. I see one of the most beautiful women in the world gliding down the aisle. And I see Joseph looking at her with nothing but love and admiration. I'm so excited to get with everybody that we have known for the last 14 years collectively in our entire lives and go, see, look, like we did it, we made it. We're committed and we're staying committed. Definitely brought us closer knowing that no matter what, we're gonna be beside each other. She is everything. Oh my gosh, she's gonna be my husband. It's a whole new version of us. And I can't wait to meet those people.